welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Modern, but it barely looks like it because this is a deck from Patreon subscriber Justin that he has nicknamed Is It Banned in Legacy? Because look at the spread of these cards. We've got Ragavan, Banned in Legacy, Dreadhorde Arcanist, Banned in Legacy, Underworld Breach, Banned in Legacy, Expressive Iteration, Banned in Legacy. And all these cards are in the same deck and they're legal and modern. And not only are all these cards legal and modern, there's another card that was never banned in Legacy, but was until recently banned in Modern, and that's Preordain. Preordain is pretty much the most efficient cantrip ever printed in a vacuum. I mean, Fetchlands make Brainstorm and Ponder better, but if you're just casting a spell and you want it to turn into a different spell, Preordain is the best rate there's ever been. For that reason, it and Ponder have been banned in Modern for quite a long time. But it's back, and I think it's a really good unban because it boosts kind of fair card selection-y based decks without taking anything away from all the existing decks like, you know, Tron, Amulet, Scam, whatever the format's about. And the power level of those decks is why decks like this could use a little boost. Kind of smart to try to unban something rather than try to ban three or four things and get everything to the same level. The big thing that Preordain getting unlocked does is it also gives us a thing we are actually happy to target with Dreadhorde Arcanist, a card that was an absolute terror in Legacy. I think of all the cards that have been banned in Legacy in the last 10 years, Dreadhorde Arcanist is near the top of the list for me where it was like, ugh, this freaking thing. I genuinely enjoyed playing with Oko. Ren and Six was so obviously busted that like we knew it wouldn't last very long, but Dreadhorde Arcanus was on this line where it was like, is this too good? Certainly feels too good. I lose every time my opponent casts it. And eventually Wizards of the Coast decided it was in fact too good. But we still get it in Modern. And the big thing that Modern was missing to make Dreadhorde Arcanist the terror that it was in Legacy was some good cantrips to refire with it. We've got four Preordains in this deck, we've got two Considers, and we've got four Lightning Bolts. That's really only 10 hits for Dreadhorde Arcanist, but you really only need one. If you Preordain, then attack and Preordain again, the uh, gears are turning, you're good to go. Dragon's Rage Channeler, Ragavan, getting up under your opponent. Ledger Shredder, going into the air, Dreadhorde Arcanist drawing cards. Then you have Value Underworld Breach, this doesn't really combo off in any sort of way. The closest thing to a combo is if you have three, two or three Dragon's Rage Channelers and a Mishra's Bobble, you can cast Bobble, mill two cards, three cards, and cast Bobble again with the cards you milled, and just like draw a card for each three cards you're willing to mill off the top of your deck, and then get set up for next turn. You can also just like bolt your opponent three times in a late game situation, which is pretty sweet. No Murktide region in this deck. We're staying low to the ground. Breach is our top end. Expressive Iteration and Dragged Heart Arcanus keeping the cards flowing. We got Counterspell. We got Efficient Threats, Efficient Removal. And that's pretty much what's going on here. I don't know if this is an optimal build of the deck or if it just leaned really hard into the aha, these cards are banned in Legacy joke. But I appreciate that joke because every one of these cards was completely messed up and it's fun to put them all in the same deck again. Let's get into this thing. This is Justin's Is It Banned in Legacy in Modern. I'm on the play in round one with a Ragaman start. I'm in. I have some small temptation as a control wizard to want to play Dragon's Raid Channeler to get an extra card worth of the selection off this Mishra's Bobble. But as a Is It Banned wizard, I think I'm just going to shove this Ragaman. Yikes. Opponent just mulled to four. What deck mulls to four and doesn't concede immediately? Is this like Belcher or something? I'm going to bobble them. Try to see what they're up to. Stoneforge Mystic. Wow. We are a fair deck of sorts. 
is this hammer. And I have a deck full of removal, but Ragavan's not super reliable against hammer, if that's what's going on. I also don't have a removal spell in my hand. Okay, let's see if they want to trade off with Ragavan this early. But I hope they don't, because I did not hit the land drop. And Stoneforge Mystic, actually terrifying. Nice, they let it through. Yeah, they're really trying to leverage the Stoneforge on their Moldafor, which I respect. Ink Moth Nexus in entered the exile zone. Okay, feels like some bonking is going to happen here. I'm going to play Channeler and consider. I could still hit my land drop this turn. I would like to move things forward. I will leave this Misty Rainforest on top twice. Top top. That's exactly what I was looking for. Here's the Stone Forge. Now we have to figure out if we can race a Cauldra. And that is the mode they're taking. Fetching for tap steam vents in the end step. Every point of life might matter, or at least every every fifth life matters, uh, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna EI pre-combat. That will give me at least delirium. If I find any removal spell off of this, we can connect with Ragavan as well. I have six good hits here. Okay, they're just doing it now. That's smart. Uh, well, we hit. Okay, lightning bolt to my hand. Ragavan to the bottom. Exile Spire Bluff Canal. Play Spire Bluff Canal. And opponent was very smart with their timing there. And they are going to get Aldra complete into play. And then we'll have to race that thing. Here it comes. I'm going to bolt this Giver of Ruins in the end step. And just get that out of the way. Start bashing for 5. I'm bashing for 5. You're bashing for 5. My deck has Lightning Bolt in it. End step. Bolt the Giver. Surveilling. Dread Horde Arcanus. That's too slow. I'm going to put it to the graveyard. That doesn't even necessarily guarantee a double spell. I guess with the Ragavan treasure it would have. Attack first. Rag trigger. Giver of runes. Do I want that? Maybe. I'm going to start with Ledger Shredder. Then I can play Giver who can shred this Ragavan into my graveyard. I do want Giver. Discard this Ragavan. Do another lightning bolt that's really nice in this heads up race situation. Okay, here we are. If they can, from their three card hand, bonk onto the hammer, that's really annoying. Like if they go Sigarda's Aid plus hammer onto Cauldra. Oh, that's really bad too. <laughs> oh no. Well, all right. This race just got harder. What I have to do now is. Get my Ledger Shredder huge. And then pro black it every block. Is that even possible? I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, this is going to be really tough. Spell Pierce right on time. Let's start with EI. Uh, there is Ottawara in my deck. Ooh, another Lightning Bolt. Is this good? Top of the library with that. Counter spell to my hand. Spell appears to the bottom. Exile lightning bolt. I'm gonna bolt stone forge. Want that out of the way so Ragavan can keep connecting. Underworld breach. Does that win the game next turn? I don't think I'm gonna have room for another EI this game. I'm gonna mill almost anything. Okay, so I can pro black my shredder and absorb. Five of this six. That's actually really good. What does Shadow Spear do? X proof and indestructible. Okay. Not protection. Still okay with that one. Maybe my opponent would be kind enough to flip a March of Otherworldly Light or something for me. Okay. I can counter spell and I can pro black. And then I can untap and breach at least three lightning bolts. Or steel paladin. I don't think so. Counter that. Mill basically anything. Yep. Other counter spell into the graveyard. They block. Throw black. I take one, they gain one. Okay. This looks good. Esper Sentinel. That shreds me again. I like that.
Spire Bluff Canal does not help this game, and neither does Spell Pierce, but Canal doesn't actually do anything. Okay. I think I pro white the Ragavan. So we have six power of flying, six, seven, eight. Yeah, and then two bolts wins the game. Okay. Pro white the rag. And then we breach our way out of here. I can bolt three times, which is enough. I only need two. Even still a cigar to aid for the road. Underworld breach. I am not going to pay. I can't imagine they could have that matters. Yeah, okay. Nice. Band legacy cards, coast to coast. Dress down. Seems relevant for this matchup. Fury. Engineered explosives. Stern scolding. That, this hits everything in their deck, right? Sure does. Okay. Stern scolding. I'm in. Blood Moon and Magus in the Moon, they do beat up on Urza Saga. I'm honestly not sure if you're supposed to bring in Moons when you're Izzet versus Hammer, especially on the draw. A Counterspell is kind of slow. I'd rather beat the board in a lot of cases. I want some access to Counterspells, but not four. Ragavan is, like, air quotes bad against Hammer because they have so many X1s, but also I cast a turn one Ragavan that game, and it was both my first attack and my last attack of the game and hit me three treasures along the way. Obviously, they also mold a four on the draw. Not a perfect thing. Not a perfect showcase, but uh, Ragavan's still really good. Okay, I currently have a sideboard that does not involve Blood Moon lined up here. I don't think I'm going to Blood Moon. Not on the draw. Maybe on the play. Maybe not at all. I'm a deck full of removal. Oh, Mistress Bobble's pretty awkward versus Asper Sentinel. Do I want a moon in here? I don't think so. I could turn some Bobbles into subtleties. It would slow down Stone Forges and stuff. You are still Paladins. Nah, I like the early velocity. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. Because it's not the creature that kills you in this deck. As far as subtlety goes, it's the, the hammers on the creature. And unless I'm right, willing to subtlety a turn one Memnite or something, then I'm not going to be able to subtlety the Cigar to Zade or the hammer that goes on that thing. Speaking of Esper Sentinel, there it is. Against this double DRC start. Handful of one mana spells. Might just have to feed the Sentinel to hit my second land drop. There's a Saga. And Stoneforge. Here it is. It's happening. Alright, deck. I'd like to draw a land so I can bolt this thing guilt-free. The alternative is bolting it now so I get selection. I'm just going to draw. Bobble. Okay, so I'm locked into Esper Sentinel drawing a card this turn, so I'm just going to cast as many spells as I can. Not going to pay for that. Channeler sees Island. That's awkward. That is the land, but I really need red here. Consider sees three cards. I guess I'll leave this on top and just play safe. My plan was to consider into a red source and just cast as many spells as I could, but that didn't work out. Stoneforge Mystic, that's dead. Your Steel Paladin coming on top of their deck. I will offer this trade. Okay, I found land number two. This can make Ledger Shredder. If there's a land in there, five mystery cards, then they're all set up to hammer bonk next turn. Ooh, are I, am I getting hammer bonk now? They're certainly taking their cantrip. They don't have Metalcraft. It is cool, though, that this Paladin is just hanging out here. Ooh, second red source. All right. I've got options now. I can DRC bolt surveil twice, but that'll draw them a card. Or I could just bolt Bureau Steel Paladin and not let them have another card. I'm going to do that. Maybe I'm a coward, but I'm okay with that. Your goal is to just not die here. Steam vents. Now that I have land number three, I don't need that. Running three lands in a row off the top of the deck in this spot makes me feel silly for not leaning in on the consider last turn, and I could be a whole turn ahead of where I am. But you never know. 
If they have a second paladin, we die here. Cool. All right. We're not beating that. Now I'm on the play. Blood Moon Subtlety. Reconsider these options. Ragavan's also better on the play. I could shave a Breach, because that's a really bad card to have early when I'm just trying to survive. Ragavan is kind of a must trade. I have my Dress Downs that can mop up a Saga. Yeah, I don't think I'm playing Blood Moon. Do I want to turn some Baubles into Subtleties? That could buy me a turn against like what they did last turn, or last game with the the double pure steel. Okay, I'm going to try it like this. Okay, I have a dress down. I have a bunch of cyborg cards in my hand. It's a little slow, but I don't mind being a control deck here. You're the control deck in this matchup anyway. Might as well live up to the roll. I'm going to bobble myself, and my plan is to play explosives on one this turn. The bobble will let me know if I want to fetch to do that. Steam vents on top of the deck. Do I need another Steam Vents? Ottawara has all sorts of cool text on it. I'd rather that be an Ottawara than an island. Explosives for one. Just put that shield up. Ooh, Preordained Dreadheart Arcanist. I know how this works. Shadow Spear. You got it. Sweet. Got there on another land. And the cool thing about Dreadhorde Arcanus compared to like Snapcaster Mage or comparable cards that exist, you don't need the spell in the graveyard until combat next turn. You can invest in the DHA and then preordain pre-combat attack, immediately re-preordain to see infinite cards in a turn. All for one mana. I can preordain twice next turn and hold up dress down. Sanctifier, okay. I can auto wire that. Preordain's not red. This doesn't beat me in combat. They preordain. Stern Scolding Spire Bluff Canal. I want both of those, and guess what? I can have them. Top top. Land number three. Attack. Preordain. Haven't done this in a long time. Feels good. I do not want Ragavan. I do want Stern Scolding. Okay, these two will touch butts, and then I'll pass the turn. It's fun that I don't even play Murktide, just not even a consideration. And I boarded out a Breach. I can scold this thing sternly. Feel smart for that. Cool. Good stuff all around. I can dress down plus Bolt to Sanctifier if I find a Bolt. EI, getting lots of looks here. Land, land, land is what it offered me. Okay, Vents to Hand, Canal to the Bottom, Exile Island. Exile Island. That was a season of Survivor. And I'm going to pass the EI into three lands in my 17 land deck. Feels good. Hoping to get a big nasty dress down next turn. If I can find a lightning bolt between now and then, if they commit two activations of Saga, I can sweep up two constructs and roast a Sanctifier. All with one dress down. Oh, can't block. Okay, deck. Lightning bolt, unholy heat. Something. Oh, interesting. Um, I can't play that if I want to make the play that I just described. Killing me, deck. Okay, I can preordain, refire, preordain. Still don't get the line that I just described. Okay, explosives to hand. Misty to the bottom, Exile Preordain, Jazz Preordain, EI, and Land, bottom both of those, Subtlety, oh, I'm going to attack, and replay the Preordain, there's Unholy Heat for some day, bottom top, and I have another Explosives in my hand, do I want to lose two life? To save Ottawara this turn, or do I just play Ottawara? The two life is starting to become relevant. All right, I'm just gonna take my pain. I'm at 10 and pass the turn. Sucks that Unholy Heat was like one card too deep to really do what I wanted. Constructs, constructs everywhere. I'm gonna let them tutor. Pithing Needle on Engineered Explosives. Smart. Never really had a target for that. 
And we could get bonked this turn. Okay, now we're not getting bonked this turn. Okay, I can absorb four damage with dress down now and go to eight. I could also take six, go to four, and get the full sweep that I was looking for by end stepping the dress down and then sweeping up the sanctifier. I think I have to do that. It's required by law. The end step, dress down. This means that Dreadhorde Arcanist and Ledger Shredder will be off for my turn. I guess I could have done this in my own end step too, or any time on my turn. I'm still okay with this. This saves a bunch of mana. Another Arcanist. Immediately Unholy Heat. This Sanctifier, get it out. Surge of Salvation, Lightning Bolt in response. Get it all out. Cool. And EI. Also, by the way, if you have a problem with the way that I'm pronouncing Arcanist, I said Arcanist for months back in the Legacy days, and uh, turns out that's just not right. If you consult a pronunciation guide. Feels weird too, just saying the word anus over and over again, but I don't make the rules. Okay, a 1 3 with no abilities. Fury in my hand, solitude, or subtlety in my hand. I wish it was solitude. In for one, the mighty one. I have bolt and heat in my graveyard for next turn that the, the Arcanist can fire in. I have some concerns about this Urza saga. None of my interaction is instant speed right now. Stoneforge, terrifying. And they got hammer, that's bad news. I guess I have Ottawara as a failsafe here. If everything else goes wrong, at least I have Ottawara. Is there a fetchable left in my deck? There are six islands in the deck. There are five in play. I don't see any in my graveyard. I must have sent one to the bottom. This fetch is extremely dangerous. Ledger Shredder. Arcanist do does cast the spell. So, Ledger Shredder works. I'm going to attack and cast Unholy Heat from my graveyard. I'm not attacking with both because they have a 3-3 construct ready to bash. Ooh, that breach is really good. I'm going to discard this uh, polluted... No, engineered explosives, that doesn't work. Cool. That's better. Okay. And they did not make the blocker. Did not want to engage with Sorcery Speed interaction. I'm going to need Ottawa to save me here, I suspect. If they have Surge of Salvation or similar, probably just dead. I can hard cast Subtlety on a Pure Steel Pally. That would be sick. Tutor to Hammer. There's a Hammer in hand. It does kind of look like Pure Steel Pally is what's getting set up here. Oh my goodness. We made it to the Promised Land. Put that away. Now they have a 5-5. Five, five. I can just block that with Dreadhorde. I think Dreadhorde is my worst creature here. I like the flying on subtlety and the, the overall stats. Operating on thin margins here. This is the last fetchable in the deck. They're all here. This Ottawa that I chose not to play on turn 1 now is my, my final hope on the last turn. DRC Breach is a combo. How many bolts can I cast this turn? Kind of a lot. There's even a bobble there. I have to worry a little bit about Ink Moth Nexus. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Underworld Breach, which will trigger Shredder. I'm going to surveil first, because now I know how these triggers work. Land of the Graveyard. Shredding. Ooh. I could discard Fury to keep Lightning Bolt. Yeah, I think Fury's efficacy this game has come and gone. Or I could discard Ottawara, Hitchcast Fury, which makes all of these constructs more killable. Ottawara can bounce Ink Moth Nexus. Lightning Bolt can hit Ink Moth Nexus. All right, I think it is the, the Fury somehow. This card seems so good. Uh, okay, I am going to discard... No, I'm not going to have enough mana in Ottawara anyway. All right, Ottawara, thank you for your service, but you're out. 
and I kill my opponent. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Not quite. I think I want to start with a bobble. As bobble plus surveil replaces itself two of the three cards, and I'm just filling up my hand, and it's free. I should see Pure Soul Paladin here. Yep, they just put it there with subtlety. And then... Bolt. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have freaking Dress Down. Why am I, why am I trying to Lightning Bolt anything right now? Okay. Uh, for each six round till the end of the turn, I can... And step a dress down. Okay, I have room for another bobble here. Rear it into the graveyard. Bobble you again. Let's look at that pally. Draw me another card. And then eight cards in my graveyard. Dress down plus four, three. And then I can play one of these other cards before the turn is over. I'll just lightning bolt their dome. It also gets a surveil. Our bluff canal to the graveyard. Pull you. I could attack with Dreadhorde Arcanist and cast Preordain, but I don't think I care. I could actually bolt again and still be in there. I could bolt or bobble again. I think I should bolt. And then I get one, two, three of them exiled. Surveil. Literally anything hits the graveyard here. Kind of ran out of time because I worked really hard in figuring this out. Harder than I probably needed to. If I had considered all of this appropriately pre-combat, I would have had an extra 3 damage here off Dragon's Rage Channeler, but now I'm not delirious anymore. Okay, then we move to the end step, and in response to the Breach trigger, I stress down. Now all your stuff's gone, everything's sleeping. Uh, EI into the graveyard. This turn, the game's not going to last another turn. Ink Moth Nexus can still wake up and have all of its abilities because the timestamp will be after Dress Down. But Pure Steel Paladin won't have its abilities to equip Hammer to it. Got a couple of bobble triggers here. Okay. Opponent is dead on board. And we know their hand is Paladin and Hammer. Okay. I believe I'm safe here. Yep. All right, cool. Nice. All right. Yeah, Bolt plus DHA gets it done. Even if they equip Shadow Spear, it doesn't matter because they're dead before they go to blocks. I spent an embarrassing amount of my time figuring out that fair breach line, but certainly didn't feel very fair. That one of breach that I left in. Feeling good. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the draw in round two, I'm going to have to mulligan this no lander. I will snap keep this to lander. I think I'm going to send... It's either consider or one of the rags. They're having a backup rag is really good in some matchups, and other times it's completely irrelevant. I'm going to send a rag to the bottom. On the play, I think I keep both rags, so I can just keep it going. Oh, a preordain gamer. Very smart and handsome. Top top the preordain. I could make the same play they made, but I'm not going to. I'm going to shove my monkey and make them respond to that. Even if they just kill this easily, it's still a thing they have to at least acknowledge. Grape shot. Okay, we're storming over there. Interesting. Could just be like one grape shot in a breach package, which I actually think is super cool, if true. Let's start with Preordain. Don't need land number four. I will take this Ledger Shredder for later. And Spire Bluff Canal. Serum Visions and Preordain and Grape Shot all in this deck. 
top top serum visions, and they found a preordain. These cans are tripping, no doubt about it. Oh, there's more. We're not even done. It's just leaving up some mana. I didn't play my consider because I want to be able to ledger shred with it. I kind of think I should pass to my end step too. Maybe this is foolish, but they shocked in that steam vent and it has to be for a reason, right? Okay. I just missed a trigger, but I played around bolt when I did it. I don't know if I should feel bad about that. Okay, now I'm going to consider. Ragavan, do I want this? I don't think so. Theoretic ritual, oh yikes. Something's happening in the end step. Resolving a gifts ungiven on me, cool. I'm going to need some counter spells quickly. There's one. Unholy heat. Unholy heat versus breach. Uh, the heat could pick off a Baral. If they have some creature in their deck, which normally these storm decks do need something like that. All right, I'm going to pitch the breach and just try to squeeze them on every fair axis I can. And they're still holding up this red blue that they shocked in. I suspect this is a spell pierce or fluster storm, something that does not answer ledger shredder, but does answer some sort of hate. I want Past and Flames and Metamorphose in the graveyard, I think. They've got two rituals in hand now. Oops, X out the wrong one. There's two rituals there. That was, I think, the best draw possible. Just going to attack for two and leave up my double counters. A pile of rituals certainly makes Spell Pierce worse. Electromancer? That was right. Okay, so they're going to put a ritual on the stack. I'm going to get to shred my ledgers. Shred Horde Arcane is going to be too slow for this. I'm now a land short of everywhere I wanted to be, but I am going to kill this Electromancer. They can ritual again in response. The rituals are all instants. That's fine. Okay. All of their mana is red, and I have Counterspell. This is why I put Pass and Flames in the graveyard, so the flashback is less effective. If they have been sandbagging a counter spell all this time, it's not going to help them here. Now I get to shred for my spell, you shred it for yours. Get rid of this bobble. Okay, they have one card left in their hand. Their engine is gone. Burnt off all their mana. We didn't have counter spell in the format last time people were playing Gift Storm. That felt good. Free combat EI. Yeah, I'll take the Arcanist this time. I think I have time. Uh... Steam vents to hand, lightning bolt to the bottom, exile arcanist. Steam vents, play arcanist pre combat, make sure I get my shredder trigger. Dump a consider. They have one card in hand. If, if their one card in hand is another pass in flames and they draw a mana source, they can actually just be back in business. Anamorphos, all right, they're looking. But looking's not free, because I have Ledger Shredder. Repeal targeting Shredder. Okay. Well, that takes a lot of pressure off the clock. Second Unholy Heat. I don't think I want another one of these. The first one, Found Purchase. I'm happy with that. It's in the graveyard. DAJ can light stuff up if it needs to. Okay, this is sick. Ledger Shredder. Arcanus gets to attack and cast Preordain which triggers Shredder, and I get to leave up Counterspell. Another Shredder. I'm going to discard a Preordain. And bottom top, I think. Now I'm going to bottom bottom. I have threats now. I'm good. I'm going to hold up Counterspell. I could try to Preordain and hit my land drop, but why risk anything? I think I'm going to win this game if I just be patient. Okay, they're passing the turn. No plays, no, pro no problems. Dash Rag, EI, or Ledger Shredder, all options here. I think I'm going to shred. Let's keep the shreds coming. I have five looks right now at a land, and then I'm holding up Counterspell and Spell Pierce. And I shred twice and then get to Preordain, which is another three cards if I want them all. Uh, not the land I'm looking for is the land I'm looking for. Discard. 
preordain. It's just as good in the graveyard as it is anywhere else. Bottom top, I like the lightning bolt. If I had stacked my shredders the other way, this bolt would actually be lethal right now. Maybe I should have thought about that more. Lots of little tricks in this deck that uh, I am acclimating to live in front of you. And Sep Desperate Ritual. Gifts ungiven. I get to shred again. Canal's gone. I actually am going to fetch for Island in between these. I just want to make sure I don't end up in a spot where I can't fetch what I want. That Breach will certainly win the game next turn. That means I don't need Ragaban anymore. I'm just going to counter this. This is how it all goes wrong. Hey, I was right the whole time. Spell Pierce, the Gifts Ungiven. Which is great, because now I'm going to get the counter spell back in my hand, and their Gifts is still countered. Neat. All right. Okay. Storm, huh? Unlicensed Hearst Tormod script, for sure. Cluster Storm. Quite literally what this is for. Don't need a whole lot going on here. I imagine this deck would juke somehow. I'm not sure what the juke is. But it seems crazy to just commit to living in this world. I probably want my explosives in for Empty the Warrens. I like my bolts because they can go face and end a game quickly, or they can pick off a Baral or Electromancer. My own breaches, especially knowing they have Rayman in their deck, can get a little thinner on that. Shave some bobbles. I like my creatures, I like my counters. Ragavan actually seems great for this. I'm actually going just zero breach. I'm the control deck here, let's do it. Okay, some counter spells, card draw, and lands to cast it all. Done. Obviously, I'd prefer if the hand had Ragavan in it, but it still might. It would be really cool if they had turned one Ragavan there after I burned out half my removal spells. Suddenly, you're a Ragavan deck. That would be a cool juke. Red Horde Arcanus could be in this deck with all the cantrips they play. Hey, oh, ding, 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 ding. We did it. I don't think I need to hold up Spell Pierce on turn two. This deck doesn't win that fast. And there's a Baral. Okay, I was not going to be able to interact with that, but look who had Lightning Bolt in the deck for this inevitability. Bang. Preordain, I'll keep that one on top. I like that one. And holding up Spell Pierce for a turn. Aria Flame. I'm going to Spell Pierce that. That can win the grindy matchups. Like this one. Preordain on top. Aria Flame, super cool card, by the way. When it ETBs, your opponent, each opponent gains 10 life, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you put a verse counter on it, then it deals damage equal to the number of verse counters on it to target player or planeswalker. So I would go to 30, but then their spells don't need to resolve anymore. They just have to occur. No thanks. I'm going to fetch a basic and expressive iteration. I already have one of those. I'll bin it. Okay, sick. Um, I'm actually just going to top top with this engineer explosives in my hand. Still holding up counter spell, ready for an empty of the Warrens. Preordain from the opponent. Serum Visions, they top bottom preordain. Top tops, Serum Visions. They like everything. That's interesting. I'm not going to spend a counter spell on it, but I'm not happy about it. Okay, can they win next turn? I hope not. I'm going to cast EI. Oh, the Ravioli's here. Preordain to my hand. Steam vents to the bottom. Exile Rag. Play Rag. I could have shocked in my land and dashed it, but I think I'd rather hold up. Consider, represent Spell Pierce. And just have this rag sticky for the future. Preordain. Brawl? Okay. That's scary. That blocks extremely well. And my... Oh, if they... Oh, I don't actually have a spell pierce. I was just representing it. So they should put two grave shots on rag. Oh, they just did it all. Or no, they did two. Okay, yeah, that was the correct number. Good job. Okay, end step. Consider. Another rag. Not currently helpful. That one three's in the way. I'm going to fetch another basic island and then cast preordain. 
Shredder DRC. I'm going to top top these. Play the Shredder. And then I have Counterspell up for their turn. Brawl being active is scary because we've seen Remand in their deck. They could actively start drawing cards. Flusterstorm plus Brawl is a whole heckin' mood. Uh, I'm going to counter this because even if they counter back, I get to loot with Shredder. If this was bait and now I lose to Gifts Ungiven, then good job. Okay, I'm going to get rid of DRC. I still want this Engineered Explosives and Counterspell. Blue red in the pool. One mystery card off the top. It's an Electromancer. Okay. Um, Explosives on two now kills the whole board. All their stuff and all mine. Do I want to do that? Versus keeping my pal around. I'm putting both players to nothing. I uh, probably should have held that land. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to wait a turn. No, why would I do that? No, I'm, I'm just going to kill everything. It's not often you get such a clean sweep on Storm, like meaningfully removing two permanents while they're hellbent. Aria Flame, yikes. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet against from hellbent. Okay. We'll see if I regret that. There is an Ottawa in my deck that can reset Aria if I need it to. Bobble, tell me your secrets. Serum Visions are your secrets. EI, cool. That's the kind of anger you need in this spot. I'm gonna take one from Aria. And they get to Serum Vis. Top topped. Terrifying. Lightning Bolt, not currently helpful. Gifts in response. Surely the person who let Aria Flame resolve wouldn't have a counterspell for this. Pew pew. Luster to hand. Bolt to the bottom. I'd rather draw a card and find a threat than like randomly put them to four, with, which doesn't kill them. Anamorphos on top. Okay. The Aria is uh, getting its work done. So they did just put a Gifts Ungiven on this tack, so I don't feel bad about the counterspell, even if it didn't do everything I wanted there. Reordain. Let's cook. Engineered Explosives. I don't have three colors in my deck. Bottom, bottom. Kraken Van, Nimble Pilferer. Do I want to get into the dash world here? Yeah, I think I want to get something going. I can still cast every spell in my hand. And they know their top card right now. Yeah, they can just choose to draw it with Manamorphose. That's cool. Is this a good pressure point for Flusterstorm? They have a lot of mana at this point. They know their top card. Yeah, I'm going to Fluster them for four here. This might not get another good target. And them knowing what their top card is, they kept it there on purpose, and they just tried to protect it from Rag. I'm going to try to steal it. What do you got over there? In we go. What was your secret? Lightning Bolt. Okay. Yeah, I understand. That's a card I like. Bolt you. Spirit 5. Tormod's Crypt. Fast and Flames is a brick. Uh, I have them dead on board. They have one draw step. Well, I guess it's not on board. I have them dead, and I know that because I have Lightning Bolt. They don't know that. Empty the Warrants Tilt. Okay. Uh, yep. You get your two one ones. You're going to need them. Ottawa. Okay, that clears the Aria, and I'm worried about very little after that. I'm going to cast Rag, not dash it. And I'm just going to bounce the Aria now. Boing. I could have Bolt plus Ottawa their two creatures and connect with Rag. Put you to three, Rag's active, and you're still top decking. But I think if I just remove this Aria, I'm worried about so little after that. I get my 10 life back. Right back to where we started on that one. Reordain's happening. There is still one, two more Lightning Bolts in my deck. Yeah, two more Lightning Bolts, plus all my Dreadhorde Arcanuses. Bottom, they're Preordains. Yuck. Alright, well, my deck does like having mana. And rather than trade Rag for a random 1-1, one, one, I kind of like this holding pattern where they're afraid to attack because Rag will get going and I'm afraid to attack because they'll just trade and then they can start attacking. And step grab a Steam Vents. 
I did bottom a lightning bolt earlier, and I don't remember if I've shuffled since then, but getting a shuffle in feels good. Get that lightning bolt back in the mix. And we're just playing draw go. They have not triggered their aria in a while. Ledger Shredder. Okay. Love it. Remand. In this is fine. I'll just replay the shredder. And we're in there. And if they try to bolt it in the end step, that's their second spell for the turn. Another draw go. Arcanist. Okay. I think I want to play this first. So if there is any sort of flurry of interaction in combat, Ledger Shredder is more likely to grow. I can actually just bolt them and win right now. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. I should have held back. No, because then I wouldn't be shredding. I hope I draw a non-land here. Okay, they just believe me. <laughs> All right. That was a fun game. The real big decision there was just letting the second Aria Flame resolve and worked out well because I'm still at 20 and they're at 5 and dead. And we got to counter Gifts Ungiven. That probably represented lethal. They usually do. If I didn't have that counter spell, I feel good about that one. On to the next round. We remain undefeated. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factors YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. I'm on the draw for round three with a rock solid hand. I'm in. Opponent spent two full minutes keeping their hand. Kind of makes me think they're multi queuing with a fast deck of some kind. I don't know. TBD. Maybe I'm reading too much into that. Maybe they were just somewhere else for a minute. Fire Bluff Canal Pass. Canal Consider Keep. Zapping her did not shock in, just tapped Blood Crypt in the end step. A shadow deck would have shocked that in. Probably some scam over there. Or is it Rakdos Evoke? Ha 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 ha. That was a whole thing at the Pro Tour. If you didn't hear about that, Wizards coverage called the scam deck Rakdos Evoke when the entire community has been calling it Rakdos Scam for the last year. And some people have strong feelings about that. I don't I don't really care one way or the other, but it's just funny. Magic players will latch onto any sort of drama. Opponent just drifted into the teens on their clock while I'm still in my first minute. I suspect we're not the only thing they're doing right now. Whether it's a double Q or you know taking care of their kid at home or they're trying to sneak a game in on the second monitor while they're working from home. I cut out all the dead air. You wouldn't know if I wasn't talking about it. But just saying, if this comes down to clock, or if my opponent just doesn't show back up after this turn, just letting you know, there's some context here. Okay, we've progressed into my upkeep. I'm just going to pass here. A uh, Rakdos deck that did nothing on their first or second turn, I'm suspicious of. Orcish. Bowmasters. I have a grip full of unholy heats for this thing. I don't want to just run Arcanist into every removal spell ever printed. Maybe I'm not supposed to let them untap because now they can scam this Bowmaster. But I guess I can heat it in response and counter their scam spell too. Maybe I'm supposed to take one there so I don't get Blood Mooned right now. Bummer. Oh, Voidwalker. I can kill that too. Everything's dead. Okay. Heat that. That heat does go to the Void, unfortunately. All right, now I'm going to EI. I do need to hit a land drop. Never fails. Okay. Bobble to hand. Spell Pierce out of here. Balding Tarn. Tarn and Bobble myself. See if I like it. Fire Bluff Canal. I do not like it. That's not the type of land I'm looking for. And as much as I'd like to hold up all these removal spells, I also don't want to lose to Blood Moon. So they're not exactly in a spot to play around Blood Moon, or play Blood Moon of their own. I'm still just going to get the basic island. They upkeep a Bowmaster, they get an extra ping off it. Alright, not a big deal. 
Their turn four tap land. I just shuffled to avoid that very fate. Still got a grip full of creature removal. DRC. I can play this and hold up counter spell. I can preordain. I'm going to start with preordain. I lose the surveil, but I'd rather leave up two mana just in case of stuff. It's nebulously stuff. At some point, I'm going to have to win this game. And I kind of like dashing rag. I like having access to lightning bolt. I think I'm going to top top these and just play both creatures. Channeler. I'm going to move into second main, see if they get impatient and fire off in combat. All right. Just efficient for removal spells there. Which I do th still think they have, but I'm going to play out my creatures. Wow, a lightning bolt. It left me with rag. Bowmaster kills this clean and easy. Grief on the hard cast. I have many ways to deal with that. They probably take breach here. That's what I'd be worried about. Yep, gone. And I'm drawing another lightning bolt. I am going to just clear the way, connect with rag, see what happens. Kill that, kill this. Attack with rag. At minimum, I get to play Arcanus this turn. Your rag. I could also just hold up counterspell. Now, losing to Fury here would be rough. All right, I'm just going to pass, actually. Just take one turn off of development here, hold up the counterspell, make sure I don't get blown out, and then, then we can start really taking control. I think if this Arcanist triggers one time, we can never lose. It's based on what this matchup's about, which is keeping your opponent off balance. Okay, I'm going to counter this. If they pitch cast it, throwing a removal spell out, that's weird. Okay, Fable. Yeah, they just really wanted to do two things that turn. And their last card in hand could even be a, a scammer. That would make a lot of sense. Surprise, last lightning bolt. Can't scam that one. I'd love to flip a Thoughtsies here and just confirm my suspicions. Fury. All right, well, glad that one's out of the way. All right, I'm going all in. Exactly four toughness in play, but if they don't fury me, it'll be hard to lose. They kept all the cards. Are you kidding me? No! Uh, literally just off the top. No need, to sh no need to do anything with Fable. We got it. They're both just here. Decline deactivation. Pain. Suffering. Misery. All right, I'm going to bolt this thing. Take care of this now while I still can. Fable reaches maturity here. I really need an EI to dig up out of this. Oh, good. They have an, not only another spell, but a really freaking good one. All right. Come on, Express Iteration. Let's, let's cut loose. Bobble is not Express Iteration. And they can play Kroxa. Basically... Bobbling would be do I hit counterspell versus every other card? And I'm not gonna bet that my top card is counterspell. Another grief. Alright. We're in trouble, team. Now they have us grief locked. They can grief every upkeep or every draw step. Is it possible I'm not supposed to play the Dreadheart Arcanist? Like if they have to go one for one, uh Fury answering Ragaban. And then Arcanus follows up. Is that even is that even a thing? Yeah, you can't copy this. They're going to try to copy Kroxa. It's a legend. I can't beat the Kroxa anyway. But you certainly can't copy it here. Okay. Uh, Lightning Bolt. The Reflection. Play the Rag. I end up at 1 from combat. And in top deck mode. Yeah, that was a, a really good 1 turn sequence. A couple turns ago. I lose three from Crocs of Trigger. I go to one from Crocs of Damage. If I start chumping, I lose. I have to kind of high roll here. Right, come on, deck. BI. We're still moving. Uh, That's not it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I needed like Lightning Bolt and Unholy Heat off of this, and I found none of the above. All right. Counter spell to my hand. Seam vents to the bottom. 
Fire Bluff Canal. I'm going to attack with a rag. They probably block. But I'm going to do it. If they don't block, there's still a chance that I hit some useful spell. Undying Malice. I'll counter that, and then I'm just going to F6. If they're going to spend 7 minutes on their first turn, I'm going to enjoy every second of making them attack me. Cool. They even took some time to cast a spell that had a triggered ability on the way through. All right, we're planning in some scam subtlety. This is what it's for. Dress down. You're big here. Stern Scolding counters everything in their deck except Fury and Kroxa. So like half the things in their deck. Um, unlicensed Hearse. My own Furies. Spell Pierce, kind of mid. I like Rag. I like the removal. Bobbles can chill. Breach seems unbeatable. Counterspell's in a weird spot against this deck because it's really good when you're ahead and it's really bad when you're behind and the deck's whole thing is putting you behind. I think I'm going to shave one of those. And I'm going to zero bobble, just all spells. Oh, Tormod Script also relevant here. And I'm on the play. Okay. Uh, yeah, Tormod Script can get in before a scam monster can strip it. So I'll, I'll do that. And they are a Void Voidwalker deck, but I have a ton of removal. The Breach seems so good. Okay, fine. I'll shave a Breach. I'll leave one in there for, for the good times. Got a mulligan this zero lander. That hurts. Never want a mulligan in this matchup. Oh, come the fuck on. Not like this. Opponent takes 10 minutes to show up, and then we're going to multi five against scan. Life is pain. Okay, keep. Uh, put Breach and one of the lands to the bottom. At least Stern Scolding is one mana interaction. I can stop basically anything. And if they just YOLO Fury or for a double strike go, then I can't stop that, but I can stop uh, Reef extremely well. Okay, shields are up. We'll at least play a game here. Not going to do anything. I'm just playing Drago. All right, hitting the land was nice. Now I can do two things. They're still not doing anything. I will counter a Fable. We don't leave this fetch land uncracked. I don't know if I want it to be a basic or a steam fence yet. But I like that one. I'm going to wait till I have four mana to play it, though. Not in a spot to take any kind of risk. Okay, Bowmaster is fine. I can bolt that at my leisure. And I'm just going to take two from it. I don't need to bolt in combat and save that one life that badly. So I am holding up three mana worth of counter spells. Uh, rag sucks. Okay, I'm going to scold the rag. They still have counter spell. Actual. If I need it. And I'm going to bolt Bowmasters. If they scam it, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think Blood Moon's going to happen this game. I'm going to get a good fetch in right now while I can. Sweet. Okay. Um, I can play Shredder and kill Bowmasters. I can also just heat the Bowmasters and hold up Counterspell or Dress Down. I think I'm just going to play Shredder and pass. Try to... Or the Lightning Bolt trick doesn't even work here because they can ping the Shredder. So close. Yep. They fell for it, except it wasn't even there. This Dragon's Rage Chandelier looks important. Yeah, I need a creature on the board more than I need a counterspell, I think. Oh, this sucks. No good choices here. If Bowmaster it does line up extremely well, specifically against Ledger Shredder. And now the coast is clear. They have five cards in their hand. They've just worked me into goop. Voidwalker, that's tough. Underworld Breach. Are you good? Right, I'm going to play Dragon's Rage Channeler. And then I'm going to try to fire off a value breach next turn. I'll end step dress down. And then Voidwalker will be off. Take a bunch of damage right now, but that should at least kill their two creatures. Another one. Okay. Don't thought seize me now. Okay, end step dress down. I don't get to do the DRC tricks. 
But there is a lightning bolt in my graveyard. Alright, Arcanist has to go into the void. This is not a land. Okay, that's a land. It does put me to three, dead to lightning bolt to, to do it. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I just lose here then. Um, yeah, Breach, Ledger Shredder, not a line. Bolt, Bolt. And I'm at three because I have to fetch Shock. I can block for a turn, I guess. Dead to every removal spell, every lightning bolt. Yuck. Okay, I mean, I will play to my outs here as much as I can. They're not good outs, though. Yeah, I guess that uh, turn, I, I really underestimated scamming the Bowmaster back into play. I could have just waited till my turn or the next turn and done it with uh, counter spell backup. All right, and now they're scamming that one as well. Yeah, all right. Can't win this game. GG. I, I believe I made a misstep there, but also that, that Fury game one, just absolute nightmare. That might have been a misstep as well if I just hold back my DRC, let Fury show up, and then take over with the refiring lightning bolts. Maybe that's the way. Tough beats on that one. I feel like there was a lot of little decisions that could have been different, but I'm not sure if they're right or wrong. Just could have been different and... I'd need a lot more testing to know confidently whether it was a pun or just a decision that didn't work out. The Command Tower software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting TCG events. It features easy to create event registration for 1v1 and 4 player Swiss structure tournaments. Event management has never been so simple and it's web based so there's no download required. Get access for just $5 at eminence.events subscribe. I'm on the draw in round four with a handful of red creatures. I'm in. Just send them down the barrel until one sticks. Uh-oh. Thoughts easy. <laughs> Not an effective card against this hand. You probably just take the breach and then buckle up for what's to come. I got two pair. Three pair if we functionally count Scalding Tarn and Misty as the same card in the deck, which they are. Bowmaster does line up extremely well against Ragavan, but I'm still going to send in the more powerful of the two cards. Bowmaster lines up well against both of these is the trick. But DRC can survive it at some point, and Ragavan cannot. Oh, we're Grixis. That's fun. Not scam. Good news. Blue red in the pool. Old Dr. Arcanist. Sure. Lightning Bolt. Tilt. Okay, I will fire my channelers into play and then pass the turn because I can't beat a 1-3 and probably die to Lightning Bolt. This is this is what this is Red Horde Arcane is doing its thing here. Has a huge butt, cheap creature, stuffs aggression, and then if my opponent just has a lightning bolt here, they get to plague wind me. Okay. Arcanist is moving into combat. It's just a thought seize if they fire anything off at all. They know about Ragman Misty. There's one mystery card in hand. This thought seize does put them into Death Shadow range, and EI is going to be a great one to clip. So, worth the shot here, even though there's only one mystery card. Might as well solve for X. This does guarantee me Delirium next turn, though, one way or the other. If they take Rag, I cast EI. If they take EI, I cast Rag, and then Legend Rule, and then that's four. Even if nothing else happens. Okay, EI's gone. I'm not gonna double or triple block this thing. Not worth it. It already did what it's gonna do. Pass the turn. Come on, some spell. Not that one. Okay, here's the Misty. Here's the Rag. Keep the original. And begin combat. Let's go. Here they come. Eight damage. One of its off rag or two of its off ragavan. Lightning bolting the rag. You got it. That may have happened anyway. Maybe I didn't need to legend rule my rag. Okay, well, I'm just gonna go all in here. Cast the other rag and fetch a tap steam vents and pass the turn. Nothing to wait for here. They're either gonna stabilize against my six flying or they're not because they're at six. Go. Yeah, I guess the 1000 IQ read is, uh, oh wow, interesting. They're still evaluating Ragavan, which they can block. Oh right, they, they have, 
DHA. They're just gonna kill all my creatures. Nope, never mind. Not interesting. Not fun. <laughs> this fucking card. Yep, I remember this. In a deck deck. I, I think a lot of the times when I talk about cards that like Vandon Legacy, it's with at least a little bit of fondness. I have no fondness, no happiness attached to Dread Horde Arcanist. And now we are in trouble. Ledger Shredder. Alright, get in there, big homie. Died a lightning bolt immediately. I guess I give them a chance to uh, mess up if they cast a spell before combat. But, like, this is the thing. Dreadheart Arcanus is just checkmate. I can't even draw a creature here. I can't draw anything. Nothing matters. It's all fake. <laughs> and they had one from hand. They're just like, yeah, you're, we're good. All right, I understand. I'm dead. <laughs> Unchecked Dreadheart Arcanus, folks. Welcome to the show. We're trying to do that. And uh, opponent just did it better this time. This matchup's interesting because I am like motivated to play to the board a bit, but also I can't beat a dread a uh, a shadow that's on the board. Do they have spells that are not creatures but not instants or sorceries? Is Flusterstorm a straight upgrade to spell pierce? Yes, they could have engineered explosives or something like that. I have engineered explosives. All right. I'm considering Blood Moon. I'm not considering Magus of the Moon. Blood Moon shuts down two of their three colors. There's no way this deck has very many basics if they have any at all. I think I do want some number of counter spells out. Maybe just all of them. And I can go around Death Shadow to beat it. Oh, I have Engineered Explosives I'm bringing in. Never mind. All right. Yeah. Play to the board. That's the answer. They're a deck full of thoughts, eases, and junk. Can't rely on a hand anyway. This makes sense to me. The the one thing I wish I knew their deck a little better, whether Spell Pierce or Flusterstorm is actually better. Okay, in we go. I'm gonna keep the Spell Pierces until I have more information. One lander with Preordain done. Cast my Preordain. Hope to see a couple of lands, and we hit exactly a couple of lands. I'll take them both. Didn't really want both islands. The base color of this deck is red for the most part, especially after board. But seeing both islands when Blood Moon is part of my plan, I'm not going to complain. I wonder if I was just supposed to leave up Spell Pierce to counter a Thought Seize this turn, and then I can draw for turn and play Preordain and still hit a land drop next turn. Took one of my EIs, they're just starting to get to work on that. I'd love to draw a one drop creature. Oh no, I'm drawing Island. <laughs> Duh, idiot. You put it there. Okay. Get in there, DHA. I'll put my opponent to the same test they put me to last game of, can you answer this? And they had a chance to answer it last turn, and they did something else, so I assume they can kill this easily. But if they kill this, that is mana being spent on killing this and not developing their own DHA. Lightning Bolt, yep, easy. And I'm going to EI first. Glad I did it that way. Shredder versus other EI. Do I want to keep going deeper, deeper, deeper? I think I do. EI to hand, Shredder the bottom, Exile, Consider, and then play the Consider. Dragon's Rage Channeler. I will keep that and put it on top. Watery Grave. They're at 13. They can get under 12 this turn with their fetch land. Thought these also gets them there. This probably takes EI. Yep. Three down. Okay, I gotta find a fetch land or a Mishra's Bobble. Or some spell that could trigger Dragon's Rage Channeler. Too easy. Okay. Channeler. Bobble. Land of the Graveyard. Five card types now. Bobble U. Lightning Bolt. Okay, that's an answer to my thing. Eat the Arcanist. Ragavan. Oh, this gets bricked by a lot of stuff, but it does put them into having two removal spells that also play through spell pierce. So I'm just worried if they have like a death shadow. But if I pierce the bolt, then they'll struggle to play the shadow too. All right, I'm going to pierce this. I want to tap them out at the very least. Oh, nice. All right, Shredder on top. Creature is just rolling now. Cool. They paid. If their last card in hand is a land, then I know that. Okay, Shredder Dash Rag gets me a not super useful connive. 
and just milling one is always reasonable. Okay. And getting Shredder out of bolt range when I know they're holding bolt is also worth doing. Just any non-land gets me an X4 here. Dang. I got there on that one. 2-4 creature. And one that will not be in play when they can bolt it next. Sick to flip Thoughtseize here. Lightning Bolt? Alright, well, I'll cast that while I can. I understand they're a deck that life total is a, a nebulous thing, but I do have a flying creature that they can't Lightning Bolt right now. And that's what I'm trying to do. Shadow... Bolt one mystery card. Please don't be fatal push. Engineer explosive. Sick. X equals one. Destroy your life. And I'm just going to attack here. I'm not going to let this lightning bolt line up squeaky clean against Ragavan. And just milling one again isn't that important. Uh oh. They've got some sort of spell that costs black black. Oh master. Sure. Oh, this does kill... No, it doesn't. Yes, it does, because of... The thing, again, wow, that was... A perfect lineup, once again. Right, can I just draw a Lightning Bolt? Uh, I'm still going to keep the Ragavan in my hand. Remember when Ledger Shredder was an exciting new card? Which is pretty embarrassing now. Okay, my next Lightning Bolt wins the game. They're Hellbent, and they have five turns to get it done here. That sucks. I can just shove this rag in right now, trade off with one of these creatures. I'm going to do that, actually. Before this army gets bigger, or whatever else is going to happen, I think this is going to be worth the most draw steps, especially against the discard deck. Yeah, let's just get something out of the way right now. And I'm going to fetch. I'll just do it now. Get my F6 value. I'm not hiding anything. Now it's a card drawing contest. Can they deal 14 to me with their 1-1 before I deal 3 to them with my nothing? Bobble. Hilarious. And I'm still going to fire it. I don't want to fire it into their discard, though. I'll upkeep this thing. Just in the market for a lightning bolt. I can take a lot of pings from Bowmaster on the search for that. Which is good, because they have another one. Yeah, if they just play this now, it gets guaranteed 3 damage. Land in their hand. Yeah, they should probably cast this. Trigger. Yeah, here we go. Figured it out. Alright, come on, lightning bolt. Where are you? It's time. DRC... They now have a 3-3, three, three, but uh, they are dead on board. This is kind of a lightning bolt on layaway. The spell pierce unlikely to be relevant at all, but F6, please brick. Just don't draw a removal spell. I hate my life. <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. I guess. And now I'm dead on board. Have to rip the lightning bolt right now. Jeez, all right. Yep, we lost the card drawing contest. GG. Okay, so we lost to two Bowmaster decks, and we beat two decks without Bowmasters. So that makes a lot of sense for our uh, creature-based card draw deck. On to the final round. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop, and be sure to use the code BOSTONROLL for 10% off when you check out. On the draw for the final round, positive record on the line. I have a turn one DRC and possibly turn one Delirium. I'm in. Uh-oh. Not a lot of X-Place Sacred Foundry. Interesting. Okay. I don't want to be hit with a Ragavan. I think I'm just going to Lightning Bolt this thing. And I want to save these baubles still for big DRC action. And I'm bolting now because they're a white deck. Uh, they could have... Surge of Salvation, they can have Boros Charm. There's a bunch of stuff white decks could do that are uh, different than just dashing a different Ragavan in. So I'm not falling for that. Oh, nice. Well, that's really interesting. And does change my play. Okay, well, invest in the future. Boros is your removal colors, so I don't expect to have this next turn. But 
It's very exciting right now. Yep, dead. Sure. I'm surprised. Okay, is this just Ragavan burn? Is it some kind of zoo deck? What do we got here? A rock and triome. Wild. I am guaranteed delirium next turn. Uh, it's a very time reveler. Okay. Creepy. Unholy heat does kill this. Underworld breach. That's cool. DRC. Get in. This was bobble. Trigger. Time to cash in my bonds here. Lightning bolt. That actually seems really good for this matchup. I'm going to bobble them. Blighted halfling. All right. I think I just saved my other bobble here. Is there some creature deck? They're holding Teferi. Or Teferi's on board. Lightning Bolt clears that. DRC's bounced. This halfling is concerning. This is a lot of ways to shove Omnath or the One Ring into play, uncounterably. EI. Don't currently have green mana, so we are a four color deck here. This is just the current iteration of Money Pile. Steam Vents in exile. That one doesn't cast halfling. They did zap it in. Steam Vents of my own. The Mirror Match. EI of my own as well. Start with Channeler. I think it's time to shred. Bobble straight to the graveyard. Oh, that was guaranteed shredding off EI. Should I choose to pursue it? EI. There's the counter spell they were representing. Guess I could have played around that one, technically. Shredder. Might as well bin it. I'm holding Breach and about to shuffle. Not holding on to anything here. Oh, you're Teferi. Don't want to play against that card for very long. Luda Delta into the graveyard. And Bobble you. What if Foothills on top? Okay, they have access to their Halfling. If that's even the best card in their hand anymore. They could just shove Omnath. Consider. Opponent's at 12. I have Breach Bolt available. Basic Forest somehow just came out of this deck with all the cards we've seen in it so far. Unholy Heat. Okay. I can pump the brakes on this whole business of Underworld Breach. Just cast Consider, see what happens. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a Counterspell on top of my deck. I'm going to draw it. Then I'm going to attack for three. And then I'm going to Heat the Halfling. And hold up Counterspell against this Omnath or whatever it is that's about to happen. This is just another turn of development. I'm actually going to Heat in their upkeep. If they have a Legend with Flash, they got me. Ragavan to the Graveyard. Just every card goes to the Graveyard now. Underworld Breach is my plan. Red Source is lethal. Fetching down to 8. Red Source is lethal without DRC. DRC plus my current iteration, or current setup, is lethal. Aragorn the Unifier, oh dear. You cast a white spell, make a human. When you cast a blue spell, scry two. When you cast a red spell, deals three each opponent. When you cast a green spell, target creature gets plus four. No thanks. I, I don't know. <laughs> Just not interested in that. Another Ragavan to the graveyard. Okay. Opponents at two. Or not at two. At two cards in their hand. Which is the thing I'm, I care about counting right now. If this attack goes through, I'm going to feel pretty good. Okay, they're at five. Underworld Breach. This is good for a pair of bolts if it resolves. Ooh, something's happening. Lightning Helix. Metamorphose. Oh, Metamorphose Counterspell? Is it actually happening? The stuff of legend? I know. Cool. Every single time in the history of Earth that someone is like, yeah, I didn't have any outs there. There's some dingus at the LGS who's like, you didn't play around Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Manamorphos Counterspell. <laughs> and that person is very stupid. But that almost happened to us. <laughs> okay. Uh, Blood Moon seems like something I'm interested in for this matchup. They have mana dorks and some number of basics, but still, it's going to be annoying. Aragorn theme deck, huh? Is Dress Down good? Uh, Fury looks good. Dress Down's a maybe. I don't think I'm going to trust Stern Scolding. 
Spell Pierce hits Teferi. Counter spell seems very important, even if they do have Aplings and Teferis. That breach was good, but I think it's still a backup plan. I'm, as you've noticed, I'm pretty bullish about shaping bubbles after board. I think that's okay to do. Rear Dane, consider. The eyes. I don't think I want my dress down, so I'm off it. I'm gonna board light. I think I'm pretty well suited to this matchup already. Arcanus doesn't work under Teferi, but I have eight ways to kill Teferi in my deck right now. What if I don't play Blood Moons, or don't play both my Blood Moons? Magus gets bolted, so actual Blood Moon. Oh, we've seen Mana Morphos in their deck too. Blood Moon might be just a trap. Okay. Talk myself into it and then back out of it. Just my additional pitch elementals. Field one lander, let it rip hand. I'll try it. This could just absolutely fail. I get two draw steps and a possible Ragavan hit to get anything going here. Uh oh. We're facing down turn two to fairy. Oh no, we're not. Nice. Ragavan. And if they go for Teferi, I can pitch subtlety, which is not countering it. It's putting it somewhere else. Doesn't matter if it's uncounterable. And then Ragavan connects and I take the Teferi if they put it on top. Who could resist this? Oh, opponent could resist it. All right, fine. Let's just do that again. <laughs> Ragavan, refire. Yeah, miss the land drop. Sucks to suck. Your move, opponent. A some uncounterable legend is happening. But I can't counter the one ring here. Subtlety does not hit artifacts. They changed their mind, just backed off everything. No man in the pool. It's the Gorn. Uh, I'm going to cast subtlety, probably pitching one of the counter spells, because as long as this uh, halflings around counter spell doesn't help. Alright, get Gorned, nerd. Uh, they put Aragorn on top of their library. I'll take it. <laughs> Obviously can't cast it ever, but it's still gone. One way or another. I will enjoy this this lunch of the King of Gondor. Looks like meat's back on the menu. DRC, bolt this halfling, and things are happening. We are up under the opponent. Red Horde Arcane is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for lands or one mana interaction to keep my Ragavan connecting. Got a fetch land. Brennan Realmbreaker, okay. 3-3 three, three if I a land, which does make a deeply effective blocker. Because Vig and Hexproof. Hard to tangle with that one. And did it. Add it, easy. And I'm going to commit my flyer to the board. Okay, next turn, EI gets big moves. It's got to survive this Ren and three cards in hand. Their life total is low from fetching. The fairy does one thing here, probably clear Shredder. Then I pivot onto EI. Yep, they're still getting in. I could double block now, but I don't want to. Ren does what when? At 7, you can play lands and cast permanents from your graveyard. That sounds really good. I don't want that to happen. Okay. Four looks at land number 3. Arcanus to the graveyard. Literally doesn't work with Safari in play. Here we go. Bolt to hand. Misty the bottom. Exile Spire Bluff Canal. Play Canal. Hexproof is a stupid word. I think I want to finish off Ren. Because that's the thing between me and my opponent's face right now. Uh, Ragavan to the graveyard. Can't even use the one I have. Thanks for asking, though. I'm probably supposed to attack first, because now they know... Like, if they have a Solitude, they might pitch it now, which they may not have if I bolted second. Okay, that's just gone, though. Your Lancer just lands now. My creatures can attack. Three cards in your hand. Big Shrug, what's going on? The Manamorphose. That's so cool. I want to just beat this opponent, but I also kind of hope we see Aragorn do stuff. Alright, let's see. What are they taking here? If they take Rag, that tells me what they're actually worried about. Okay. Rag's gone. Play to land. Lightning Bolt. 
Uh, I'm going to attack to fairy and just try to save my spells. Because now they've got nothing going on and I'm holding up counter spell and I'm attacking with a three power creature. They're on a four turn clock. Okay, I think it's time to pump the brakes just a little. Make sure I don't get beat by some corny top deck. Lightning bolt. Okay, um, that's fine. They're hellbent. If I draw a land, I'm in business. Untapped land just gives me DHA with counter backup. Oof. Alright, uh, one moment of heroism to rule them all. Put this arcanist into play, hope they brick. Alright, here we go. Here's my card. Pass. And we have Dreadhorde Arcanus take over the final round of the, or the final game of the final round, like the deck was drawn up to do. Firing off their fetches in the end step. They got tons of mana now. Please don't cast Omnath. Uh, that one's actually fine. All right, sure. All right, your removal spell. We survived my gambit. Unholy heat. Well, I'm going to keep making the same gambit. And I'm just going to bolt their face and get a knife here. Three counter spells. All right, I'm going to keep the heat in case they resolve something this turn. And then two counter spells should carry me through the rest of the game. Once again, asking you if you have it. You don't. All right, dead. Preordain. I like that. Unholy heat spire bluff canal. I'm going to bottom heat top canal. Oh, they're just done. Cool. Nice. All right. We defeated all decks that didn't have Orcish Bowmasters, and we lost to two decks that did have Orcish Bowmasters. Makes sense. We are a deck full of creatures, some of which are X1s, and our whole thing is drawing cards. There's a good chance I misevaluated or missequenced some stuff in the scam matchup. The Grixis Shadow matchup literally just came down to a top deck, and that's magic, but it happens. The scam one is more interesting to talk about because there might be actual meaningful things to review there other than Bone and Drew, the card they needed. This deck felt fun. All of the things mattered. Every single one of the banned legacy spells was responsible for at least one win. And that's good news. We didn't have Murktide. Underworld breaches our Murktide. Uh, like three lightning bolts at the end of a game is our version of playing 8-8. That's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know if this is better than traditional Is It Murktide. It's probably not. Let's be serious. I don't know if Arcanist goes into traditional Murktide with all, all these uh, breaches and stuff, but this is certainly a fun thought experiment. I like that all of these cards that are completely out of bounds in Legacy are actually just pretty reasonable in Modern because they're not backed up by Force of Will and Days, which turns out to be the real problem with a lot of cards. And it makes the formats feel meaningfully different that you can do stuff like this and it's okay. And then in Legacy, you can cast Days and Force of Will and protect things that aren't these four cards. Justin, thank you for this exercise, this deck. It was a lot of fun. Everybody else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.